is uh, all about uh, you know uh, what we are doing as uh, volunteers uh, in this ICU team, and uh, you know uh, uh, it's very important to know that it is uh, in this ICU team we have around twenty people and uh, all dedicated to you know uh, to one goal, and that is uh, you know working on critical ICU uh, cases and trying to find solutions. But the most important thing I would like to, you know, reiterate that, uh, and which I keep on, uh, you know, telling my people also that uh, if you have to really, uh, you know, save life, you need to collaborate, you need to team up. So uh, ICUs uh, are very stressful uh, cases. Uh, ICU environment is quite stressful. But yes, uh, there are, you know, the, the joy that we get uh, at the end of the, uh, you know, when we resolve a certain issue or we resolve a certain uh, way, that is something which I think uh, today we as volunteers, uh, you know, from BNP for this ICU unit, we would like to share with you. And uh, uh, Vasanta uh, and uh, there are others also here, I, uh, because who have joined this call. I think uh, all of us have, in a way, uh, you know, taken some time from our daily schedule to uh, take up cases and uh, I would say cases where I would say other voluntary organizations across Bangalore have really not been so successful but we have done that we have proved that and we have uh, you know we have come together to share those experiences uh, so uh, maybe today I will share one of them maybe Vasanta will take it forward um, and uh, uh, I would just you know, keep on saying one thing that, uh, you know, all of us, you know, in the BNP team, uh, we all of us are individual volunteers. We have, we have tried our best in uh, supporting this uh, team uh, in this great trauma time that we are all going through. And, uh, in a, and in any smaller way, and from a, from a, we all have tried to do our best in terms of supporting either the ICU team from outside and and given all of our support whatever they can, uh, you know uh, you know be it in the morning shifts, be it in the evening shifts, be it in the night shifts, you know all have really worked hard. So I would like to thank all of them, all of you guys, uh, whoever uh, I mean not only the people who are going to speak today, but uh, to all those volunteers in our team who have really worked together and. Uh, and it, it I would I only only say that it's if it's a great feeling when you plan something for a uh, certain uh, case and you really end up like, you know achieving the desired results. So uh, you know uh, just like to add on that this uh, meeting is to just reiterate on a particular case, but there are many cases. Uh, I think that uh, you know the call may be taking another one one or two hours, but I'll just re, you know talk about one particular case which uh, came on nineteenth of May uh, around uh, five thirty p.m. And uh, this particular case uh, uh, is about a patient named Prabhakar Joshi. And uh, I think this one is one of the most difficult cases that our ICU team might have handled it. And, uh, you know, uh, hats off to Vasanta for taking a lead on this case. Uh, but just a quick intro on the case and then Vasanta can take it forward. Um, this particular case, uh, patient was admitted in one of the top brain institutes in Bangalore, I would say. You now, I think all over the India, I would say. Uh, it's Nimhans. And uh, uh, this patient uh, was 45-year-old male patient and he had comorbidity. Uh, brain stroke and that to COVID. So that was a little complex. And then the person was not financially so, you know, in a better state that uh, he can support treatment outside uh, Nimhans. And uh, uh, he, oxygen levels, uh, you know, there are some key parameters that we always take care when we are in ICU section, uh, which define uh, and which actually are our uh, bread and butter when we start taking our ICU cases are the CT score the uh, the oxygen uh, levels and the comorbidity so this particular case was really uh, one example where we had all the things going against us and all the things which are wrong and uh, we can and we thought you know we might 
end up uh, you know getting uh, losing the patient but i think we uh, we kept on going and i think only thing i can say is uh, if you want to save a life you need to collaborate you need to team up and then only you will be able to save a life it is not individual effort of arijit or vasanta or any other volunteer there are many people who are acting together to make this success so uh, this is just a brief about the case and i think uh, over to you vasanta the the how the whole thing kind of materialized so vasanta uh, it's all yours thanks arji thanks hey everybody good morning again uh, i think uh, like arji said this is uh, and, and like i wrote the small introduction there for us it was truly a roller coaster ride i think each one of our cases that we all manage here uh through this volunteer work in a in a crazy pandemic situation i mean otherwise it would only happen in a batman uh, movie right i mean where does where does something like this happen in people's lifetimes very often and uh, so that's really i mean it, it i think the to me personally the entire situation seems as unreal as that and uh, and, and half the joy is the fact that in spite of the unreal amount of chaos and negativity around us there are people like you uh, who are stepping out and there are so many people like us who are stepping out and they are helping in so many wonderful ways and i think this particular case uh, the people rallied around prabhakar joshi beautifully Uh, i was lucky i think uh, to actually come uh, at a time when uh, there were just so many volunteers at, at for this particular case and everybody was looking just for direction in this uh, particular you know uh, challenge so like arijit said uh, here we had a person 44 years old who was deaf and mute he suffered a brain stroke on 14th of may he was unconscious he was at nimhans one of the best institutes not just in india i think in asia they do path breaking research as far as neurology and psychiatry go they that could not have been a better place for this person to land at we also had challenges though this person was uh, somebody who was holding a bpl card holder his uh, spouse was also a deaf and mute person they had no support his father was had some disability and was paralyzed and completely uh, in bed being taken care of by his uh, wife and they had a young daughter who was at home and therefore the wife herself could not actually run around plus of course the fact that it's difficult for her to communicate and uh, and therefore there are a couple of family members who were really distant family members who stepped up for them uh, and luckily for us one of them was you know slightly more social media savvy than the others and the other other, other family member who's a cousin brother uh, was willing to do whatever was required so he was the uh, foot soldier for us you know he would uh, as per nimhans uh, and bbmp policy he was required to be an attender who would always be available so the uh, he would wake up every morning and by 8:39 he would report at the nimhans a uh, building where the covid ward was situated and he would stay there to 9:30 in the evening awaiting uh, directions from the doctors awaiting directions from the volunteers awaiting directions from his other cousin brother awaiting directions from the various people who were calling him uh, you know and just trying to help prabhakar joshi get better medical care and support it's not that prabhakar joshi was not getting good medical care and support i think the problem also lied in the fact that nimhans as an institute was not authorized by bbmp to actually take care of covid patients and so in that context they did not have a uh, ventilator support for uh, covid care for their covid care ward they did not have active covid care specialists like many other doctors or in hospitals in bangalore today have they did not uh, if something serious happened to prabhakar joshi they would not be able to manage an emergency covid situation in that ward and that was something that was worrying them because here was a patient who uh, had clots in his brain was unconscious 
uh, had a, a kidney, a kidney health issue. He also had comorbidities. He, he was both diabetic and uh, had hi hypertension. And on top of that, this person was, uh, you know, having a lung infection. And that kind of complicated the situation a lot for the doctors. So from day one, the doctors were advising um, uh, the attender, the family member, to actually take Prabhaka Joshi out of them hands. Uh, and at that and at that point of time, the I think all of us know we were all in the same boat together. The number of beds in Bangalore were just too many. Ventilator beds or the kind of ICU and life support that Prabhakar Joshi needed was practically not available. And what was surprising, I think, like somebody had mentioned to the group yesterday, that one of the things this pandemic had, has done has actually made us more aware of the of a medical terms and what hospitals are capable of and you know what our healthcare infrastructure is all about and this was one of the many things that this particular you know case woke us up to uh, the neurophysician and surgeon available for an icu ward was literally limited to six hospitals in bangalore you know and Imagine a city like Bangalore, and we, we are, I mean, we in South of India are extremely lucky to have some really fantastic healthcare facilities. And in cities like ours, if we hear that there are just exactly six facilities with, uh, a, you know, a, a hospital, six hospitals, which can actually offer you a neurophysician and a neuro, neurosurgeon, then somebody has a brain stroke. I mean, that just seems too small a number especially given that the number of patients are not small. And most of these hospitals were so focused on COVID that they actually did not have active neurophysicians who were caring for the patients in the ICU uh, of their various hospitals. And so we had actually whittled it down to two hospitals where there were active doctor, doctors available, which was Victoria and uh, uh, MS Ramaya. And I think the, just the search, just the search that brought us down to these two hospitals was a humongous task. And I, so, you know, we had, uh, 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 we had totally 11 volunteer groups that were, you know, working towards helping Prabhakar Joshi. And I remember organizing these people into three streams of work. One was a stream that was just searching the hospitals. The other was a stream that was actually looking at all, all the other, you know, uh, help that Prabhakar Joshi needed. For example, in case this, the entire BBMP lineup did not work out for him, then how are we going to do this? So there was a keto, uh, uh, you know, call out for funds that was started by somebody and th that stream of volunteers went out and looked for money. And then of course, the third stream of volunteers that was actually looking at what are all the other options uh, either zonal contacts uh, through BBMP, you know, political contacts, hospital contacts, who all can suggest various other options to actually take care of Prabhakar Joshi even within them hands or outside. So these were the three lines that we were searching. And so this humongous team of volunteers that were searching for hospital options came down with two hospitals for us. And both these hospitals were chock-a-block full. There was there was no ICU that opened up in the six days that we were searching. In fact, the entire ecosystem was searching for an ICU bed for him. And that was, I think, uh, it, was, it was a very, 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 you know, uh, disheartening realization to come to. Uh, the, and then, of course, the other options started kicking in. We, we did, pretty, because we knew that we were not able to get to the right kind of hospitals for him, we had to make alternatives work. And in that context, uh, I'm very proud to say that, that in fact, our Keto uh, you know, call out for uh, support moved from, I think somewhere around 45, 65,000 rupees to four lakhs in literally 20, or no, I think 16 hours. The champions who were actually calling out for help and you know, going across all platforms, I'm sure asking their neighbors and everybody, uh, friends and everybody to contribute. They just ensured that if, if at all the push came to shove and Prabhakar had to go into a, you know, private nursing home to support his uh, health condition, we would have as much money as we needed, at least for the first two, three, four days of the treatment. And 
just getting that together in that short time frame was kudos to everybody who was in that system with me. Uh, then, of course, the third one where we actually said, let's look at, because, I mean, truthfully, uh, we all knew that if it came to any neurological health issues, uh, you know, uh, anything to do with your brain, there was really no institute better than NIMHANS as far as the, uh, in fact, Indian subcontinent also was concerned. And they had some of the, they had some of the best doctors, they had some of the best equipment, they had some of the best uh, treatment processes, uh, medications available. Really to pull him out was, I mean, a challenge. Every time we spoke to a doctor from another hospital, they were like, hey, you know what? He's unconscious. He's had a brain stroke. There can't be a better place than Nimhans. Can we actually move him? You know? So that conversation kept happening again and again and again. So we, and then we came to the fact that we need to start supporting Nimhans. That's where uh, Arijit and I stepped up and had a detailed conversation with the NIMHANS team uh, yesterday. And uh, we, are, we requested, we said, you know, there are other ways. I mean, because we have examples within the BNP ecosystem where different kinds of unusual collaborations have worked in this pandemic. So we suggested the same to NIMHANS. We said, you are the best, uh, for, you know, hope for this particular patient. We can support you with, uh, you know, specialists from the outside as far as COVID is concerned. And uh, if, if that is managed, then for the rest of it, there really is no better ecosystem than your own. And uh, luckily for us, the Nimhans team uh, agreed that what we would do would be always best for, you know, in the best interest of Prabhakar Joshi. And, uh, and that worked out by, by evening, they had uh, they'd called in a specialist into the entire activity. Luckily for us, Prabhakar Joshi actually uh, regained consciousness. And uh, you know he was beginning to kind of communicate with sign language. Uh, they had had some tests done that day. His counts and indices were improving. Uh, and we were suddenly, from a very, very hopeless, very, very difficult situation, we had actually come into light. And um, you know we had money if he had to come out. We, we had him awake, which was, you know, I think, uh, at least 25% of the recovery as far as a brain stroke is concerned. Of course, I mean, it's a, it's a long path uh, from there on, but we had him awake, you know, uh, and uh, we also, uh, his COVID counts were actually being well managed and his other uh, conditions, he had, a, you know, he had some kidney trouble and that actually his kidney counts also came back to normalcy and all of these were such huge wins yesterday. You know, uh, I think by the time the entire thing wrapped up and we were able to tie up all the uh, smaller details, ensure that medications reached him and the family was assured and all of that happened, it was like a biggest sigh of relief for not just Arijit and me, but I think, I don't know, I think hundreds of people who were out there on various different uh, platforms with us, trying to help us uh, help Prabhakar Joshi. It was absolutely, I mean, a, a, a brilliant effort, a, a brilliant collaborative effort by people who didn't even know each other. It was just, I mean, if, if for example, uh, you know, somebody remembered that, hey, you know what, we had a new keto uh, target. All I had to ask the team of volunteers was, can somebody reach out to the person who set up the keto and just go ahead and increase the amount? And next thing you knew, three people had reached out to her made her increase the amount and, you know, she was writing back into the groups. It was just like, you know, when, and these were people who had never met each other in life and they were just working seamlessly with each other. And the beauty of it was uh, that everybody had that one single hope that, you know, Prabhakar Joshi would come back and, you know, be happy with his family again. I mean, life, life is tough. But, uh, you know, everybody would have a chance. And that was the fun in this particular uh, volunteer project. Yeah. I'm me and Arijit both are open to questions on this one. And I think, uh, thanks for some I think to add on, I would say that, uh, you know, I keep saying to our people and uh, even I keep on saying to, uh, you know, our BNP seniors, you know, uh, where there is a will, there is a way. And you need to devise solutions. You need to think ahead. 
you need to plan so if you and you need to do a good due diligence i think these are very key factors uh, you know and uh, in uh, any anyway, you know saving a life in icu environment and uh, of course the stress is one uh, one factor but yeah but you need to just recuperate yourself keep yourself in uh, you know in a, in a cool mood and try to uh, you know find ways and solutions that you can and that that is what i want to thank each one of us here in this icu team uh, that you guys are great to work with and i hope that we keep doing this i hope that this incidences don't happen of course but yeah uh you know uh, uh, i think I, I i think i would only say that i just love it when a plan comes together so um, excellent work by by the icu team in here so any and thank and thank yeah. over to you just i i think i missed one point i think the one of the one of the uh, biggest compliments that came out to the uh, bnp team through all of this was the fact that the nimhans team noticed that we had done a brilliant job in our volunteer work they have now invited the nimha the bnp team to actually support the nimhans team both in psychiatry and neurology do the uh, do a similar volunteer work for the patients who are walking in every day these are patients with neuro neurological and psych psychiatric problems but who are also covid positive so i mean hopefully that project also takes off but the fact that you know the team recognized the good work is a uh, is is one of the highest compliments that we have received yeah hey, yeah uh, if i can yeah. if i can comment so hey arjit this is sabya and vasantha arjit i think uh, first of all thanks for sharing this uh, great example and experience i want to congratulate uh, on behalf of everyone for the great work you both did and not just this but all through and um, it's been a great inspiration to us and arijit uh, consistently you have been driving new ways of doing things so and uh, i think we all will be able to leverage your approach and the process i think diligence is a key element but also it's about the right follow through and getting it to a closer so great job great job and uh, thanks again it's always been an inspiration to hear such things and follow through thank you yeah thanks abhi I think over to Sri Srikant. I think we uh, that's all from the ICU teams. If I can add, sorry, this is Ram, and and I sort of echo what Sabya Sachi said. Uh, right, uh, none of this. Uh, 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 this has been uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, a great sort of uh, collaboration and work by Arijit and Masanta and the entire, the entire team, right? And and they sort of left no stone unturned for this particular patient, and not only for this particular patient, they have been doing this for a lot of other patients. So this is only one case they have sort of brought up. Uh, 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 and I think the amount of dedication Arijit and Masanta and the rest of the folks bring in every day is 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 uh, uh, is really really uh, what do you say? Uh, humongous. So I mean. I would like to place on record a appreciation from the entire uh, community as well, Arjit and and Masanta and the rest. Right? I mean, you guys have been stellar over the past few weeks, uh, and and I think my always when I essentially set to put up a case on the ICU group, I know that it will get sorted out, right? And that is the kind of faith I think a lot of folks now have in this team. And and thanks to no, no part to the amount of effort you have put in. and thanks ram and i would like to uh, place on record the contribution by the entire icu team there are about 20 of you out there uh, just doing stellar work day in and day out and that's something that's truly inspiring and motivating as uh, vasantha rightly said the fact that an organization like nimhans is saying now they want to tie up with us is testimony to the wonderful work that is happening and not just nimhans uh, we are in touch with some of the other citizen groups also through whom we are getting cases we are solving i think the feedback is pretty much uniform i think people are seeing the good work being done by the bnp volunteers here and that's coming in for very good appreciation and praise as well uh, so i don't i don't have anything more to add but just wanted to convey to the team that this is not just about uh, self appreciation uh, there is a lot of appreciation coming from outside and more than anything else i think the reason why we wanted these things to be shared is uh, hopefully this can act as 
an inspiration and motivation for the others also because i know that there are quite a few people when we talked about volunteering i think people are a little bit skeptical not for any other reason they are worried about whether they'll be able to make an impact or not and very often when you do not have good progress on a single case you tend to get demotivated i think the experience of the team shows that there's absolutely nothing to get demotivated about the way we we been telling everybody is uh, why less we can't get 100% success rate let's look at it as a glass half full rather than half empty if let's say we get 10 cases if we're able to find a resolution for five rather than beating ourselves on why we could not get the five resolutions we could actually look back and say we actually managed to save five lives and i think that's a huge impact that the team is making so every life saved and i think yesterday's case was just that case of you know the person having so many different issues and it's so it's such a proud moment it's such a heartening moment to see such situation happening what more of a motivation do we need what more of an inspiration do we need and guys continue to keep rocking i uh, i definitely will just bow to you guys and Uh, and one more thing that i want to tell the rest of the team members is these guys have taken it to such a ridiculous extreme and i i'm using ridiculous in a very positive way these guys are actually working night shifts how many of you, i don't know how many of you know this arjit actually works a night shift so that any case that comes up in the night even the critical nature of the same they want to ensure that every case is attended to with uh, an equal amount of commitment and when i look at night shift and all that you guys are making it sound like this is a corporate organization where people have incentive financial incentives bonuses linked to working in shifts and all that it's impossible to just even think about what motivates uh, you know you all to do that night shift and just you know goes to show right this is completely selfless work truly motivating and inspiring keep rocking keep doing the great work fantastic uh, i am truly proud of each and every one of you and great work yesterday on the case that you guys handled and closed out thanks so much i mean shrikant sabisachi ram but uh, well, shrikant you are not actually on the group but uh, sabisachi and ram are on the group and i can uh, speak for not just uh, the bnp volunteer icu volunteer group but actually across all the different volunteers who are actually stepping up in this pandemic there are more than arjit and vasanta who are on the night shift Uh, for what it's worth i think people are willing to give more than their 100% uh, to uh, you know the to the task at hand uh, you're right it is slightly ridiculous but you know for all of us on the night shift we are also equally grateful for those of you or uh, those of us in the morning shift who pick up the baton so for example i have had uh, some phenomenal uh, support from deepa pack and soma pande who i would be awake till about like say 5 6 in the morning and they will pick up the baton at 5:30 from me and the person at the other end will have seamless support and it's not, i mean these are just two names out of i don't know how many other volunteers that i have been working with but it's i mean it's really volunteering is not something like arijit said we we can do alone Uh, there are days i would have picked up a call and i think ram heard from me once when i did not know what a particular community was i mean i think one one of the things i suddenly you are you, you come face to face with the weirdest of requests and information how does a certain communities burial or crematorium rites happen and what is the bbmp rules with regard to that if these are questions that we would have normally never faced and then you know Uh, you know the the entire network wakes up to kind of pull out all kinds of information and help you with it and we i don't think a single volunteer is an island we would not be able to survive without this ocean around us you guys i mean all of us are seriously fantastic people yeah it's really nice vasanta and darjit and the entire team uh, stupendous work i believe selfless and so motivated <clears throat> let god give more and more energy to save more lives to all the volunteers working on various cases and save as many lives all oh, let batman inspire it always works dalita <laughs> <laughs> any other uh, queries or suggestions from the team out there uh, from the 
attendees uh, before we call it a close. Yeah, I think uh, no more uh, queries. Uh, yeah, thanks, Vasanta. Thank you, Arijit and Srikant and entire ICU team and all the other teams, right? It's not only ICU. Well, today we had this example, but various other teams that are working out there with utmost silence uh, most of the times, but doing a phenomenal job. Thanks to each one of you. And we'll see you again on one of our next session, possibly tomorrow. We will keep you all updated. Thank you so much and have a good, good day. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Shrikan. Thanks, Lolita. Thank you, guys. Bye. Take care. Have a nice weekend. Bye.